Okay, I think we're ready to go. Uh, thanks again for joining. Um, my name is Kelly Hotta. I am a sales engineer at Snowflake. Uh, prior to Snowflake, I was actually at Tableau for about five years, so this, uh, this webinar really is quite dear to my, my own heart, and um, I know that we've worked with lots of customers uh, using both tools very successfully, and so hopefully after the webinar, all of you uh, will have a, a couple of ideas and, and some tips to go back to your, uh, to your work with. Um, great, so a couple of housekeeping items before we, we kick off. Um, again, there is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. You should see that uh, there for you to be able to ask questions. Feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, we have some, some panelists on the line who can answer them uh, as, as the webinar is progressing, or um, we actually have some time at the end as well to answer your questions. Um, and with that, uh, I will introduce my co-speaker, Connor Knowles uh, from Tableau. Um, and he's going to kick us off and, and just talk a little bit about Tableau. We will jointly talk about how the two products sort of sync together. And then uh, Connor will dive into some of the specifics around Tableau performance uh, and, and some tips. All right, Connor, on to you. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, really happy to be joining you today, and thanks everybody for taking the time out of your days to to see what Kelly and I have in store for you. So, a um, little bit about Tableau that I'm going to speak to, uh, a little intro to myself as well, but I always like to kind of start by showing a slide like this with Tableau because ever since, you know, Tableau has been a company since 2003, uh, we've always had the same mission statement, and that is we help people see and understand data. And the focal point there is uh, people. Uh, I've been at Tableau for a little over three years now. I'm on Tableau's product marketing team, specifically working with technology partners. But I was actually a pre-sales consultant uh, for a couple of years before. And I've, I've worked with a lot of different customers. And it really holds true, uh, that people statement. I've seen so many different types of people using Tableau. Um, you know, data scientists, actual scientists, analysts, IT professionals, DBAs, journalists, teachers, students, you name it. And it, it really is for anyone and everyone. And I'm really happy to be speaking to you today on behalf of Tableau and how you can best use Tableau with our great partner, Snowflake, to, to really give you uh, your, you know, to give your analytics platform the speed and optimization that you require. So happy to be here. We'll kick into uh, some of the content real quick, but I'll hand it back to Kelly to tell us a little bit about, about Snowflake. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and so I think for me the biggest thing here is that our mission statements really uh, go well together, right? So Tableau is there to help people see and understand their data, and we're here to, to enable every organization to be data-driven. Um, and the way that we approach it is, again, from more of the back end. Right? So we're the engine that hopefully will drive all of those amazing data-driven projects that um, all of you are, are embarking upon. Um, okay, I'll keep it short and sweet. Connor, go ahead and, uh, and give us a little overview of Tableau. Perfect. Thanks, Kelly. So, yeah, how we want to start today is anytime you're talking about you know, best practices. There's, especially with, with Tableau, there's, it's a really broad area. There's so many different things you'd have to keep in mind or consider when trying to make that, that dashboard or that workbook perfect. So what I want to start by doing is, first of all, just tell us a little bit about the Tableau platform and then go over some general performance tips and then we'll break into Snowflake as well to see how we can, you know, use each other uh, uh, well in, in conjunction. So um, let's, very quickly, depending on you know how familiar some of you are, let me just tell you a little bit about the Tableau platform. We deliver an enterprise analytics platform that will empower and elevate your people. You know, it'll really increase the value that you know they provide to your organization. And we also deliver a platform that is going to meet the tough security, governance, and scalability requirements uh, of an organization like like yours. And the platform consists of really four main products within Tableau. There's Tableau Prep, helps you prepare your data for analysis by cleaning, shaping, and combining your data. Tableau Desktop, which I'll actually show a little later in a demo, is our authoring tool. You can connect your data wherever it might be, uh, use 
powerful drag and drop analytics to help create visualizations and dashboards. Then there's the sharing component. There's Tableau Server, where you share your dashboards and findings uh, deployed either on premise or in the public cloud. And there's also Tableau Online. It's visually the same experience as Tableau Server, but it's deployed in the cloud and managed by Tableau. Ultimately, with Tableau, we want to provide you with a lot of choice and flexibility. So you can choose to deploy on-premise or in the cloud like AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, or in a fully hosted environment like Tableau Online. And you can also choose to deploy on an operating system of your choice, right? Windows, Linux, Mac, depending on you know, what you want to use. And you can interact with Tableau securely uh, via the browser, mobile device, or even embed your analytics into other applications. And you can connect to that data easily, whether it's flat files or fast databases like Snowflake, big data, cloud-based data, or any other application data. There's no need to move your data. Tableau can fit into you know, your environment. And then you can choose to query that data, either live or extract. We'll get a little into that later. But ultimately, Tableau is all about giving you that flexibility um, so you can choose what you want to deploy, how you want to do it, and furthermore. So as I said, I want to start off with some general performance tips with Tableau. It'll be a good segue into really finding out how do I know if uh, there's something better I could be doing as far as optimization on my workbook. And that'll go really nicely into kind of using that in conjunction with Snowflake. So let's take a look here at a couple of tidbits that I like to remind people of when we're talking about performance in Tableau. And the first thing really I want to start with is that beginning phase, that connection phase. So when we're talking about performance, it's always good to start with the connection. And Tableau supplies a multitude of options for connecting to your data, as you can see by the long list in Tableau Desktop when we connect to a data source. And we have a number of native connections. It's over 60 or so. But because data lives in so many places, we can also utilize things like the ODBC drivers. Essentially, if you want to connect to something not listed uh, in that long list, you can use C driver. Good example there is Snowflake. There's a Snowflake ODBC driver, but we also have a native tuned connection with Snowflake. And it's really important to keep in mind that those native connections mean Tableau has implemented techniques, capabilities, and optimizations that are specific to those data sources. You know, different engineering and testing activities for those connections really ensure that they're the most robust that Tableau has to offer. So that's why you should always leverage a native connection over an ODBC connector, Snowflake prime example there. So good thing to keep in mind is you know, what's my initial connection? Am I utilizing a native connection there or not? And then we also can point to design. This is always important because Regardless of, you know, the speed of your connection or, you know, what you're using on the back end or, you know, it really comes down to how have I created my workbook? How have I designed this? I always describe Tableau as a blank canvas. There's, there's a lot you can do. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities towards what you can create, specifically when you're trying to make that really perfect dashboard. So structure is very important. So I, I always, as a pre-sales consultant at Tableau, I saw a lot of times customers maybe trying to use too many sheets on a dashboard. And, you know, Tableau is having to query, you know, back and forth for each of those sheets or each mark that you have on the view. A good, good example there can be like maps, for example. You might have millions of little points and think about the person viewing it as well. Is it really useful to have so much clutter, um, even from just the standpoint of being clear or simple as far as trying to convey what you've made? So, you know, having too many sheets on a dashboard um, might not be great as far as understanding what's going on, but also from a performance standpoint. Tableau has to query or, you know, render a lot of different things at once. And we'll go into a specific example of this uh, in the demo portion as well. But definitely try to keep it down to maybe, you know, four or five sheets, depending on the size of them, and maybe communicating across different dashboards so that you don't have to bring every sheet up at once. And you can kind of give that end user the ability to Okay, if you want more detailed information here, why don't you click into this action and you can, or this button, an action filter will take you to another dashboard, help conserve some space and really make it a little more organized. 
And then we can go back to you know specifics around only working with the data that you need. Specifically, you know, we're we're always looking at billions and trillions of rows now. That's that's really just the new reality with data, right? There's so much around us. We oftentimes need to analyze all of it or most of it. But it's important to know that you you need to know what data you actually need for the questions you need to ask and answer. So one of the first things you should do once you connect to a table in Tableau is add a add a data source or extract filter. And your database, you know, Maybe a good example is it might have years and years worth of data, but you only need to examine the past month of sales. So you can tell Tableau, let's only pull in the, the most recent month's worth of data. And that right there is one way to uh, truly optimize you know, all the subsequent queries that are being run underneath back to the database. Those are going to speed up uh, you know, exponentially because you're talking about only looking at a small subset of the data. Maybe it gets a little more complex to where, you know, I, you do need those years and years worth, but then you can start looking into things like, you know, aggregating certain extracts, rolling them up to a certain level. So, you know, maybe if you, you don't want 365 rows of uh, data of sales every day for the year, you can roll it up to the year level. So now you're looking at only one row for the year. You know, things like that are really some good performance things to keep in mind to um, kind of, you know, tidy up what you're querying so that Tableau is only looking through the data that you need it to. And let's also kind of keep going on, you know, specifically maybe the layout. This is sort of a design and layout, but also a, a really popular one that I like to talk about a lot. And it comes down to guided analytics, which we like to emphasize at Tableau a lot. There's, there's always instances where filters Specifically, those filter dialog boxes are needed in a dashboard or a worksheet. But every time you're clicking within a filter box, Tableau has to query. You know, it has to go back and get that information. And maybe you have a, a very long, discrete list. Tableau has to go and find each and every single member of that list. Well, Guide Analytics really maintains the use of action filters within a dashboard. And it's much more interactive, much more intuitive for the consumer of the dashboard because you might select maybe a high-performing category that you can easily see and naturally see through a bar chart. And once you make that selection, the other visualizations filter down accordingly. So it really gives you more insight to influence where your next click is or where your next question is. With filter boxes, you know, oftentimes when I see filter boxes used, um, they're, they're long, discrete lists. It's a lot of guesswork as far as, well, you know, what region do I want to see? What customer do I want to look at? You know, this example we see here is a, a really great example of kind of click to see where the data is going to show you where to go next. You can see that, that detailed view in the bottom right showing you only a number of different rows. It really helps you find that final answer a lot quicker. And then keeping with filters is knowing when you do have a filter box, for example, how to use them and to keep in mind what sort of things are happening depending on how you use them. So a good thing I've seen a lot is people will use only relevant values. You've got those long discrete lists. One filter selection, if you have only relevant values, actually might affect uh, more filters in the view, right? So it can turn into a really time consuming query. You're not just selecting one, but you're selecting multiple as they tie into each other. So try to use only relevant values sparingly as it can cause the filter list or the range to be refreshed whenever other filters are off and change. Maybe consider pointing the filters to a smaller data source for the dimension values and using something like cross database filters to push the where clause to the main data source. So um, also small things like if it is a long list and you have to select a number of different members or maybe customer names, you know, utilize the apply button. You can add you know, the apply button to a filter so it only runs the query once you've made your selections and decide, okay, this is the list I want Tableau to go and find. Let's select apply, and that can save you from having to query after every single click. So small things like that can really contribute to, you know, some, some noticeable increase in performance. And these are uh, sort of a couple phrases, I guess, that I, that I have lived by. Um, ideally, when we're using Tableau, we're connecting to data. It's, 
we have to think about what, what's the back end like, right? And that's where we'll get into a lot of the snowflake conversation as far as you know, making sure we have a really strong back end because if it's, it's not fast in the database, it's not going to be fast in Tableau. It's not going to magically speed up our times. And then additionally, if it's not fast in Tableau desktop, right, once we first create the workbook or the dashboard, it's not going to be fast in Tableau server or online. And when I hear customers trying to discover, well, how do I know what the issue is? How do I know if it's, you know, phrase number one here or, or number two? And a good thing to keep in mind is just what's happening once we sort of click into, you know, some of these different um, workbooks on Tableau server. What, what is Tableau actually doing when I'm trying to go and access visualization? So that's what I'm going to get into next is, uh, once we you know, click into a dashboard, I want to know what's kind of happening underneath the hood. So here's a, a good chart that I like to show. And basically when we're in the browser, we click into a workbook. There's, there's a number of steps that happen lightning fast behind the scenes, but sometimes you can experience a slowdown, right? And it's very important to understand where that's occurring. So like I already said in those general performance tips, it can come down to a lot of things. It can be dashboard design, Maybe it's too many marks or sheets, it's taken a while to process. Or maybe Tableau has to calculate you know, a lot of different table calculations within the view. So you know, what, what we need to keep in mind is that maybe it's also something where wherever the data is coming from, how do we know? Well, that's where Tableau sort of has a mini analyst that can help us out at our side to help determine the potential cause of workbook slowdowns. And that's what I want to demo real quick. And it's called the Performance Recorder. And this is something that you can turn this Performance Recorder on from Tableau Desktop, or you can turn it on in the browser, in Tableau Server, or Tableau Online. And for me, it's always a great place to start to really decipher where the issue is. So if you open a workbook, it's taking longer than you thought to fully render and show you the complete dashboard. This is a good place to start to find out, okay, where is my issue? Where is, I need to identify that, that performance issue. So let me go ahead and let's break into a little demo. Let me show you how we can use the performance recorder. And for that, I'll open up a, a workbook I have. Okay. All right, here we go. So just a basic dashboard, uh, nicely made, pretty clear. It's got some nice uh, labels up top, but uh, maybe I'm experiencing some sort of performance slowdown, right? So right now I'm in Tableau Desktop. Process is similar in Tableau Server and online, uh, a little different, but uh, all the same works very similarly. So if I go up to the tabs up top, I can navigate specifically to my settings and performance tab. And you'll notice there's an area down here called start performance recording. So this performance recording here, once I click it, we'll see that nothing is really happening, right? And so once I actually start to you know, click into these different areas, you can see that I'm just going about my normal routine, maybe clicking in to see you know, how the dashboard is working, Maybe I come in and change some of these regions. We go a little further, click into one of these action filters, take me another view. But Tableau is just recording what I'm doing um, in the background. It's keeping you know, logs of that data. So now what I can do, I'll go to settings and performance, and I'll stop the performance recording. And a workbook will come up. Whoops, that's not the workbook. One sec, minimize that, there we go. Uh, I think I came to my other screen. Okay, let's drag that over, here we go. The Tableau pops open a workbook, and what we can see here is a few different sheets, right? And Tableau's going to show me, you know, how long it takes each action to occur. So every click that I made, Tableau, had some data on it, and we can see if I may pop into the sheet, you know, a nice timeline showing how long everything took, the size, these Gantt bars are sized. So I can see 
There are a number of different queries uh, that took a little while to run, about 0.8 seconds. So still not that long, but we can see relative to the other actions I took, these were the things that took longest. But if I go back to the dashboard, what's useful here is I can see what took the longest. So a lot of queries being run. I can even click into some of those and I see the SQL down below of what exactly is happening. Right, so that could be good to help us understand, okay, why might this have taken so long? I can see the specific worksheet. And as I scroll down, we'll start to see some different areas. And let me adjust this filter as we're not seeing quite all of them. And if I scroll down here, we can see, you know, something different from the executing queries. I can see computing layouts. So maybe it's a situation where I have, you know, a table calculation or something that's taking a little longer to render, right? Um, don't see an example here in the events, but maybe it's a geocoding issue. Maybe I have a lot of different marks on a map. So you can kind of start to see how Tableau is telling us a little more of where time is being spent. And easy enough to do, right? We just turn it on in that help tab to help us see where some of those issues are occurring. But uh, that, that's what I wanted to show for the performance recorder. Easy enough to use and, and sort of show you those beginning stages of just where you can identify some of those issues. So now what I'll do is now that we know that, that'll be sort of a good transition into, okay, maybe it is something coming from the back end. Maybe I need to speed up a little more. How can Snowflake help with that? So I'll turn it over to Kelly and she can tell us a little more back on the Snowflake side. Great, thanks. Hopefully everyone can see the slides again. Um, cool. So performance is, is one of the main reasons we start speaking to uh, to Tableau customers or um, customers that have, have used Tableau for a while. In that, um, you know, with with Tableau on its own, if you don't have a fast engine underlying, again, it's, it's only as good as what you have under the covers. Um, and so, from my background, coming from Tableau, that's sort of the, the angle that I was approaching this all at. Right? I would hear from people and, and they'd tell me that, um, you know, we're, we're going to be building a data warehouse and it's going to be a single source of truth. Um, it's going to be really performant. And I'd always, in the back of my mind, think that they're chasing this, this sort of unicorn that didn't exist. And the reason for that is um, really because of what I saw. And I saw people struggle with this in, in many different ways. And, the reality that I saw was, was more like like this image where it's data is siloed, data is treated sort of as this um, as this sort of precious commodity that has to be protected and um, you know restricted. And so people that want access to this data, all of the no, oh, it seems like my audio is not very clear. Hopefully it's better now. I'll be closer to my mic. Um, it, it's, it's all the people that want access to this data aren't able to have it, right? And the people that are managing the data, it's, it's not that they're uh, not wanting to, to give access, it's that they can't. It's that the underlying infrastructure just couldn't handle it. And so um, this was actually an image that uh, a customer of ours uh, put up on the screen when they presented to their leadership to describe the feeling of, you know, moving from their old provider to Snowflake, they're also a Tableau customer. And they told us, look, with Snowflake in, in place now, we can do all of the things we wanted to. We can, um, you know, give access to our data to all the people that want it. So our vision is to really enable this uh, world where people can have fast access to data at whatever time they need it and make decisions from that information. And our solution uh, is we built a full data warehouse from scratch to address this particular challenge that we saw. So really high level, Snowflake is, is three things. We are a full SQL data warehouse meaning we are ANSI SQL compliant. Using Snowflake, if you're coming from uh, any other SQL database, should feel really familiar. You shouldn't have to learn a new language or skill or hire for those skills. Right? We are just a SQL uh, database. So your data stored in tables, views, schemas, as you would expect. Um, the second piece is that we were built for the cloud. So 
we weren't built on any other existing technologies. Our founders spent the first two years in stealth mode building Snowflake from, from nothing. And the, the idea they had in mind was we're going to build it for the cloud because the cloud is what will give us the elasticity and the scalability that we need in order to really make this thing work. And then the last piece is we are a full service. So we are a data warehouse as a service. We are, again, because we are in the cloud, um, not only do you not have to worry about upgrades and patches and maintenance, you also don't need to do any indexing. There's no vacuuming. There's no manual backups you have to worry about. And so as a DBA, you're freed of all these sort of janitorial tasks of managing a database and really focusing on, you know, the data cleanliness and lineage and cataloging and all the really important things surrounding um, those tasks. Okay, so going a little bit um, deeper here, uh, really what differentiates us as a product and as a platform is our architecture. So again, uh, our founders, uh, they were from Oracle originally, um, and when they were there, they sort of saw the constraints of existing technologies in that either they were these shared disk systems where you're bound by the box that you're running on and you sort of start to see contention between compute, uh, compute nodes trying to access a single copy of data. Or they were the shared nothing distributed type architectures where data storage and compute are really, really tightly coupled together and then you have many nodes to run on. And the idea here was that it was supposed to be scalable. What we've seen is uh, yes, it is scalable, but it's not elastic, right? Scaling these things is not a matter of just pushing a button. It involves a lot of time and effort. And a customer told us recently it would take them 25 hours to uh, increase the size of their cluster. So realistically, that's not going to be possible, right? So with Snowflake, what we've done is we've sort of um, merged the two. We've, we've created a, a completely new architecture. We call it the multi-cluster shared data architecture. We have a single copy of, of data in our storage tier, and that's completely separated from the compute tier surrounding it. So storage and compute are completely decoupled, and what that does is it gives you flexibility to, A, grow each piece as needed, so they're not you know, forced to grow in, in tandem, and B, you're able to spin up compute on demand. So you can, you can spin up compute clusters for specific jobs as you need them. And as soon as you don't, you can turn them off. So we call these compute nodes uh, warehouses. So going forward, I'll just be using that, that term. But if we take a look at how this might um, play out uh, with Tableau in your organization, well, it all starts with, with your data, right? So either you have data that's already in the cloud, which makes things much simpler, of course, but even if it's on-premise, you know, getting that data into Snowflake is a matter of simply uh, running a copy command. Um, and to do that work, to do that data loading, we need compute power. And this is where we would spin up what we call a virtual warehouse. Now in Snowflake, these virtual warehouses are, again, they're up to you to decide how big or small they, they need to be. And we size them according to, to what we call t-shirt sizes. So extra small is our smallest warehouse, that's a single node. So here, as this example, uh, in this example here, we might spin up an extra small and then run a copy command to load data into Snowflake. We could also um, then think about of course, once it's in Snowflake, you know, it's in that logical model, we're going to now query it. So with Tableau, we might say we have some dashboards that are running in Tableau Online or Tableau Server. We will give those users their own compute power, so in this case, a medium warehouse, to run those jobs on. The powerful thing here is, the, again, the separation of uh, not just the storage and the compute, but the two compute nodes, right? So you have the extra small warehouse doing the data loading while you have the medium warehouse on the right running your operational dashboard. At no point do those two are, compete for resources because they're completely isolated and, and dedicated. Same thing goes for different types of reporting. So you might have your, your operational dashboards running there, but you also have some advanced analytics that you're running in, in Tableau Desktop. Um, the advanced analytics requires a bit more horsepower, and so you're going to give them a, a larger warehouse. 
Now, because we are in the cloud, again, not only are we scalable, we're super elastic. So there are two main ways that we, we scale Snowflake. The first is that we can give you a faster engine, right? Um, and the, the main sort of use case we see for this is people running models or advanced things, uh, advanced analytics in Tableau or whatever tool they're using, and they're essentially wanting more that to go faster. And so if you run that on, an, on a large warehouse to start and you find that it's too slow, what you can do is write a single command and increase the warehouse size on demand. Right? So now I have an extra large warehouse to run that work on. It's going to be that much faster. We see linear scaling uh, with, with warehouse sizes. And when work is done, I can simply turn it off. And at that point, I'm not even paying for compute at all. Cool. So the other way that we scale is more for a situation like this. And I'm sure there are a lot of people on the call today that have experienced not just traffic, literally, but uh, traffic to try to get access to their data, whether it's in a dashboard or trying to actually analyze it, right? And this is those peaks that happen in every business. Is it, if it's end of quarter, um, you know, end of financial year, Monday morning. Uh, we had a customer that, that said that their entire sales team tried to get at their dashboards every Monday morning, and they would have to wait in line to get their request fulfilled, right? And it makes Tableau look bad at the end of the day. But really, it was the, it's the underlying infrastructure that can't handle that peak, that, that peak in concurrency. And so with Snowflake, what we can do is we can enable what we call multi-cluster warehousing. Now, this gives you the ability to set a maximum number of warehouses to run as soon as concurrent, high concurrencies begins to happen. So say, for example, we set this operational dashboard uh, warehouse have a maximum of five. Well, what that means is as soon as people start hitting the Tableau dashboards, say there's all of a sudden 100 people trying to access that data, and queuing starts to occur on Snowflake, we will automatically spin up a second, a third, a fourth, and up to a fifth warehouse to accommodate for that peak. And as soon as that peak subsides, we will switch those off automatically as well. Okay, so in terms of how this looks, how you would actually go about doing this, um, whether you expose this to your analyst or you're just doing it as a DBA, it's really simple. So the interface in Snowflake, this is just a, a screenshot, but scaling up is a matter of just choosing the size of your warehouse, right? And you can, of course, alter that size uh, on demand. Scaling out is just a matter of setting the maximum clusters to something more than one. And then finally, we also have the ability to automatically stop and start warehouses to, again, really mimic your usage. Rather than have to pay for this thing 24-7, you're only paying uh, for it uh, when you're actually using it. Okay, so a couple points around um, what we can enable uh, for Tableau users, both the, the admins and the, the analysts. The first is that we allow you to ingest all types of data, whether they're semi-structured or structured. So JSON, XML, mostly the, the common ones we hear about are like clickstream data, IoT, anything that's machine generated. We can ingest that as is. And what that means is from a DBA's or a, a data engineering perspective is we don't have to manage a separate pipeline. Um, from an analyst perspective, this means you can have access to all of this data in one place and not have to pull it in from different sources and, and you know, different Excel files and, and data dumps and things. The second is that we give you the ability to create zero copy clones. So whole clones of databases and tables can be created instantly without adding cost and without adding any maintenance overhead in terms of managing a separate environment. So um, if you wanted to run an experiment on some data and not have to, you know, worry about ruining the production copy, well, you can create a clone for that work specifically. Uh, the next is that we have um, continuous data protection, which essentially allows us to recover from any point in time. It's sort of like the back button in Tableau Desktop which is probably the most used button, but essentially if you drop a table, if you alter a table by mistake, you can recover from that immediately within uh, a specific time period that you set. So it goes anywhere from 24 hours all the way up to 90 days. 
Okay, and with that, I will do a quick demo. I'll just share my screen. Okay, I'm hoping that worked. Maybe I'll get a ping if that doesn't. So um, this is the Snowflake interface. Uh, super simple. Um, databases is where you store your data. Warehouses is where you decide what compute cluster you want to run. So at this point, we have a load warehouse. It's a small size. It's suspended. Um, but what I can do is I can go to my worksheet and I can start running queries, right? So I can do some data loading from this worksheet. Um, I already have some data loaded into this environment. So what I'm going to do is from Tableau, just log in to this environment. I'm logging in as a, a different user. Um, so of course we have role-based access here. And as soon as I log in, uh, I have this dashboard pre-created, so you don't have to watch me create it. Um, but essentially now as I start to interact with this view, all of these queries are going to be running live to Snowflake because we're utilizing a live connection. Right, so I can start to see, you know, uh, the weekends, how people wake up a little bit later and take these bikes. Um, I, can, I can click on a specific point to see how people, where people are taking city bikes around New York City. Um, and while these queries are running, I can also look to do some analysis on the query time, right? So I can pull in the data uh, from what we call the information schema to start to analyze how are my queries running, are there any slow running queries, where was the time spent, um, and I can take a look at that in more detail. Cool. So a um, quick demo of just loading data and then pulling in more, uh, more fields into the Tableau view. Well, to do that, first of all, I'm going to create uh, a clone because, again, I'm just experimenting here. What we're going to do together is we're going to load in some weather information. The weather information I'm going to load in, though, is in JSON format. So I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you how we're going to clone to create a dev environment. It should be pretty instant. We're cloning the whole database, but we're done. So if I refresh on the left-hand side, we now have this dev environment to work in. I'm also going to create a separate warehouse called my dev warehouse because I don't want to, again, interfere with anything happening on my production warehouse. So we'll, we'll do that, and we're done. And then we have, again, this weather data. So I'll just show you what it looks like from the source. It's in this JSON format. So normally, uh, Tableau doesn't handle this uh, particularly well, um, especially as it starts to get quite complex. So what we can do is we can load it into Snowflake, first of all, as is, into a column by itself. To do the load work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us more horsepower. So I'm giving us a faster engine here, giving us an extra large. And then I'm going to load that data in. So we're loading uh, just under 40 million records of JSON here. Uh, and it should take, I don't know, about 15 seconds or so. So as this is going and loading into, uh, into Snowflake here, we're doing some work on it. We can talk to what that, what's happening under the covers um, in just a sec. So well, it's taking a little longer than I thought. Uh, but we'll let that load. And as soon as it is loaded, what I'm going to do after that is essentially make it available to my analyst users. Um, of course, this has to happen during a recorded demo. <laughs> um, I'm going to stop that and just see what is going on. All right, we're on. Let's try that again. All right, we'll try that again. Um, and as that's going, um, just keep in mind that we are loading, you know, quite a, quite a lot of data here. Um, that one seems to be going a little bit better. And as it is going, a query ID is, is associated with this query. So I can actually drill down into this query ID and see as it's running what it's doing. So as a DBA, I, can, I have insight into what's happening, where is the time spent, right? How many rows are we, are we working with? So that one worked well. Something was off with the first one. But now we've loaded in that 38 million rows, and we have it in Snowflake. But it's still in JSON, right? So it's still in that JSON format. So what we're going to do from this point is uh, we're going to query it 
to parse it out. And the, the really magical thing we can do in Snowflake here is we can essentially query it with SQL and make it oh, I need a, and make it look as if it were a structured source. So here, querying that JSON data that just now looked very quite scary um, is now in its nice parsed out table format. Okay, so with this, what I can do is, first of all, let's switch back to prod. So I'm gonna do a, a clone back to prod and then I'm gonna drop our dev environment. And then I'm going to create a combined view for my analyst and Tableau to be able to use. So it's gonna combine those city bike trips with the weather information. And then I'm gonna give them access. Cool, so with that, I can now switch over to Tableau. And I can actually, while we're doing that, I'm gonna load in the rest of my data just so that we have more data to work with. And what I can do from here is I can go into my connection and I can simply change the table that I'm viewing to that new combined view. And then if I go back to say, looking at the number of rides people are taking um, here over the years, I can now bring in, you know, what was the temperature at that point in time, for example. So the average temperature, um, and I can start to see, you know, if I dual access this and get rid of where we don't have records for my, my weather, if we go in and drill down to some of these days, what we'll find is that this always boggles my mind that on the, on the 31st of December, it was negative 20 degrees. Sorry, I didn't convert it to Fahrenheit. This is Celsius. I think they converge at that point. You know, there were six and a half thousand people that took bikes out when it was that cold in New York. So I don't know what's going on, but in any case, we now have all of the data, so we now have 61 million rows. We can still query it here from Tableau and get good response time. Um, and people are usually blown away by the fact that that's the live query against Snowflake on that much data. Okay, so that was my demo, and I think I can stop sharing now. All right. Okay, cool, I think we're good. Um, and in terms of time, I'm gonna just go through a couple more here around the performance. I know we are running a little late, so in terms of questions, we can stay a bit late to answer those if people have time. Otherwise, we'll more than we'll follow up with you guys directly afterwards. Okay, so performance tuning in Snowflake, I'm gonna hit on a couple points here um, that are important to consider when, when connecting with Tableau. The first is to try connecting live. So again, that demo was a live connection to, to Snowflake. Um, the reason for that is we have a lot of built-in optimizations that you just simply wouldn't be able to leverage if you weren't doing that live connection. The second is to remember to uh, isolate workloads. So characterize your workloads according to uh, specific elements. For example, um, you know, you might have, first of all, simple dashboards, and you give those simple dashboards a, a large or maybe even a medium warehouse to work on. Meanwhile, you have a, a couple of dashboards that you know are going to be really high concurrency dashboards. And for those, you can turn on the multi-cluster warehousing. Meanwhile, you have maybe some data science teams. You know how they want their own power and they don't want to have to, uh, you know, uh, hold back at all. And so give them their own warehouse, warehouse to work on. And then finally, run all your ELT, ETL, and all the maintenance jobs uh, on their own, on their own uh, cluster as well. Um, this is a bit of a review, so I won't spend too much time, but the two ways we scale, again, scale up, give yourself a bigger engine if you need it, uh, or scale out. If you're, if you're finding that the, the road is not wide enough, add some lanes to that highway, right, by, the, by scaling out with a multi-cluster. Um, Little under the covers here, Snowflake does uh, a lot of performance tuning under the covers that's really transparent to you as a user. But it's, it's important to understand what, what some of those main ones are. So 
the first is, you know, if you're seeing queries run slowly, you can check that the optimizer is behaving as expected. And when we load data into Snowflake, we're actually creating what we call micro partitions. We're breaking the data into tiny little blocks, and we're running statistics on top of those. So we know where they all live. Now, when you run a query, say your table has 100,000 of these micro partitions, what we should see is only a subset of those returned. So query pruning is, is a big way that we make sure those queries run quickly. The way you can check it is in your query profile, which I showed before, you can check pruning in terms of total partitions and how many were actually scanned. The next thing you can do is, is also what we demoed. We can query the information schema or account usage tables directly. And what you can do is pull that into Tableau and start running those uh, dashboards, even creating alerts potentially, you know, to see uh, how our queries running over a certain amount of time, have warehouses been turned on and not shut off, that kind of thing. Oh, we have that twice. Okay. And the last piece is, is more of a knob that you can turn. Uh, this happens, this is, is important with really large data sets usually. Um, there is a way that we can explicitly cluster or sort the, the data. So by default, we do this naturally, meaning as you load data into Snowflake, we will cluster it for you. However, for really large tables or maybe tables that you're, you know you're going to be filtering on specific uh, fields quite often, you can specify those as cluster keys. The other thing we have coming, and it's currently in, in preview, is materialized view. And with both of these options, uh, the cool thing about them, or the really um, powerful thing, is that we handle all the maintenance. So once you create a clustered table, we will handle all of the maintenance of that clustered table and make sure it's always clustered. Same thing goes with materialized views. As soon as you create an MV, we will make sure that it's up to date. Okay, so all of what I've said has probably made the analysts really excited because they, they can do all the things they want to do and they have freedom to access the data when they need it, hopefully. Uh, but then on the flip side of that, we always have the, the DBAs usually and, and the people that are concerned about, and rightly so, uh, the quality of the data, right? And, and making sure that it's not just a free-for-all and, and chaos. And so Tableau uh, has, a, has an approach to that, which uh, Connor will, will jump into now, called Data Server. Yeah, it's a, it's a good good way to bring it full circle there is essentially how do we get the right data into the right hands. And Tableau's you know, uh, governance strategy through Tableau Data Server really uh, helps us get that situated. And, you know, because if, if a business isn't empowered with, with data or there's too many restrictions or hurdles required to access that data, I'm sure IT has... You know, constant nightmares of users going the route of locally saving sensitive data to perform quick analysis. That puts your company at risk and it, it blinds your organization from knowing how the data is being used. So in a self-service environment, the role of data governance is to enable access, not restrict it, and ultimately allow those users to get answers they need in a controlled environment. And that's what we can do with Tableau servers. So essentially, you know, having the owner control that data. You know, it's coming from Snowflake. You bring it into Tableau, publish it up to Tableau server, and then you can you know, do different things with the security as far as you know, if you're on authentication, making sure the right people are accessing it. This can be done through you know, permissioning a Tableau server to make sure the right groups, you might have a marketing group, they need to have access to one data source, but uh, you don't want the dev team to have access to that. You need to make sure that Maybe there's more uh, specific criteria within the data. Well, through row-level security, you can make sure that you know so and so can only see the region that they work in, and not necessarily uh, an entirely different region of uh, another teammate. So that's where Tableau Server can kind of bring bring this all full circle together to make sure that once you have that data and it's working really well, it's in Tableau, and you have those workbooks going off of them uh, very quickly and smoothly that the right people are accessing it accordingly. So ultimately, uh, we want to also discuss you know, how this may have been done by others, who else has been successful. Uh, definitely want to leave time for Q&A. So uh, talk to you really quickly about a couple customer use cases, and then we can dive into some questions. I know we'd love to, to make sure we have time for that. 
A um, couple of good examples. So Electronic Arts, uh, one of the largest video game manufacturers in the world. A lot of recognizable titles that some of you have probably heard of. Um, initially, EA evolved their data strategy to accommodate a, a constantly expanding data environment, right? That's a very common time you'd see Tableau and Snowflake used together is, you know, these companies are using so much data, especially with EA. They had 24-7 reporting across the globe. They really had no time for, like, ETL windows, and it was taking too long to just create Tableau extracts initially. It took anywhere from four to eight hours to kind of duplicate data. They were forced into splitting some data sets. They didn't ideally want to do that. And really, they were just unable to update those as consistently as they wanted to and get them through to you know, their sales teams quickly enough to uh, analyze, okay, what are we selling well? What, what can we improve on? And how can we do this quickly to get that out to the business? So once they were able to implement Tableau and Snowflake, they experienced much shorter, faster, and fresher, uh, more holistic data sets, as we kind of saw through a number of the different ways Kelly showed us as to how that could be optimized. And now they're able to more easily look back at their historic data in a much more granular detail. So they're asking uh, much more in-depth questions than they were able to before, and they're saving a lot of time in doing that. So obviously important there. One last example I'll, I'll go through is University of Notre Dame. So uh, specifically, high-growing business demands, uh, the fundraising office at Notre Dame they needed a, a flexible, scalable, and user-friendly data warehouse and a BI platform that could keep pace with all of that big data coming in. So faster query performance time, support for both concurrency and scalability, those are some top priorities along with some reduced maintenance and, and overhead. So that department adopted Snowflake's Elastic Data Warehouse. And if you are interested in that, it's actually a joint story on Tableau's website and Snowflake's website. Uh, now, this team connects directly to Snowflake with Tableau Desktop to see and understand trends and help the university better structure their fundraising efforts. So those dashboards and reports that are consumed, they also leverage direct connectivity to Snowflake. And that really allows the end users to see that performance gain as well. So uh, if any of you are curious a little more on either of those, I recommend going to Tableau's website or Snowflake's website to read up on it. But uh, a couple more things to keep in mind, some, some good things to access, some further reading is uh, best practices for using Tableau with Snowflake. You can um, get that on our respective websites as well. And then uh, obviously access a trial, both Tableau and Snowflake. Try it out for yourself. Um, if you have any questions, you know, reach out to, to us. We'd love to help. And with that, I know that we want to uh, make sure that you know where you can get those trials, Tableau website, and Snowflake as well. And now what we want to do is open it up to questions. And as Kelly said, we'll, we'll hang around a little late to make sure that if there are any coming through, that we can get to those. Great. Awesome. Okay, we have tons of questions. I'm just sorting through some of them. Um, I saw a couple, though, that we could, I guess, both address. <laughs> um, the one, a, a couple people were asking about extracts versus live. Um, so, yeah, from my perspective, look, I would say start by trying doing live connections only because it's like you're spending time and money on a platform and then not using it if you're going to extract everything out of it at the end, right? Um, in reality, we see kind of a hybrid. I, at least my experience so far is that people do a little bit of both. And so it's not a really clear answer, uh, but what we do across the board, live connections to Snowflake versus current database tends to be a lot quicker. Did you have anything that you wanted to add, Connor? No, I would agree with that. I, whenever I use Tableau, I start live, and then I only go the extract route if maybe, you know, I'm, I'm looking at something that needs to be optimized a little more, or you know, the live connection isn't very fast. Um, probably only thing I note is take an extract if you do need to do some sort of like offline workbook manipulation because uh, obviously you can't use a live connection if uh, you know I, I guess planes have internet nowadays but yeah that's the only other way I'd, I'd recommend is uh, go and extract and here, offline yeah. work <laughs> yeah exactly cool um, okay we had one about uh, 
how long, or this is for me, I guess, so how long do uh, clones persist? So they, they don't expire. So unlike the data protection that I mentioned, where it's more what we call time travel, um, that expires depending on how long you set it for, so 24 hours to 90 days. Clones live forever until you drop them. So they're just like any other object um, in, in the system. Um, okay, so uh, let me see. There's a bunch of, oh, there was one around uh, Tableau performance over really wide tables. I think that kind of goes towards your, your first point, Connor, around maybe filtering the data before you start working with it. Yeah, I mean, yes, skinny and tall, obviously, is what um, Tableau would prefer to read, but um, getting the column structure, you know, is, I guess, is, is limited or as down as possible. Um, utilizing data source filters to see what exactly you need. That being said, I mean, extracts, you can you can definitely create an extract to see if that would speed things up, but if you have a live connection with a data source that has tons and tons of columns, I'd just say just toggle between the two, see which works. I typically recommend trying to, I mean, anytime you have that many columns, odds are you can maybe pivot it down. I see it a lot with date information, so uh, a number of different things you can work through, but uh, best thing I'd say is, is try it and see what, uh, what you're experiencing. Cool. Um, okay, there's a couple for me that I will answer. So one, uh, security in Snowflake, so data security particular in particular. Um, so in Snowflake, when you load your data in, all the data is by default encrypted at rest and in flight. So we handle all of that encryption for you. Um, and we essentially, uh, we even have another addition that has even more controls. So we essentially have a hierarchical encryption key model that we rotate keys within. Um, and with our enterprise sensitive data edition, we also give you the option of managing your own key. And so at any point, if you want to revoke that key, you can. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, How about, uh, there was one about how Tableau handles security. So um, is there anything in particular, I guess, you want to highlight with security within Tableau, I guess, data server and stuff? Yeah, it's a data server data is a prime security. element of that. Um, yeah, depending on where the specifics of the question is, I mean, I can really quickly, Tableau, we can authenticate through, you know, SSO of, of, of your choice to make sure that you have the right people going into your Tableau server, and then through authorization and permissioning within Tableau server, uh, you can permission at individual user levels, it's recommended more at the group level. So kind of like I said in that example, you can permission so that like your marketing team uh, your development team only has access to certain projects within Tableau. You can think of those as folders so that, you know, I personally am on the marketing team. I don't have access to go and look at maybe our executive folder or our sales team's folder. So very easy to do that uh, via the different group levels. And then down at sort of the, the row level. So maybe you do have aspects of data through row level security. You can implement what Tableau calls user filters. So I can uh, you know, I work out of our Seattle office, so maybe I can only see the data coming from the West region, and you can implement that within your, essentially, columns from your data source, so it can be very automated, very easy to do, so that only the right people see uh, the right aspects of specific data within a dashboard, for example. So, I guess that's how I'd say security at a high level. Cool. Um... Okay, I will answer this one in terms of uh, which cloud providers. I know we had a couple of questions about Azure, um, in terms of which cloud providers Snowflake runs on and, and supports. So it kind of depends where you live. Um, in the US, we are across both AWS and Azure, as well as uh, in the EU. So we have Azure and AWS support uh, out there too. Um, that just means that, you know, if you have an existing relationship with either of those cloud providers, 
um, you know, it, it, you can run Snowflake in that same sort of network. It does not mean that we run within your own VPC. Um, and the other thing to note is that from a user perspective, Snowflake is the same experience, right? So it's just the underlying um, storage and compute that we utilize from that provider. Um, there was one question, Connor, that uh, I think was answered by a mistake, but it was around um, white labeling. Do you mind answering that? Um, yeah, what, what was it specifically? Was it like so, Tableau Online related? Can or? you white label? Is there a multi-tenant capability? To, and, and can you white label it as well? Uh, yes, you can. And then, I mean, typically I get the multi-tenancy question if, if people are talking maybe about Tableau Online or wanting to create multiple different sites. So it don't, you don't necessarily have to partition at different project levels within server. You can create different sites all together. So um, you might have an entirely different environment like within your Tableau Online instance. So that's, that's very easy to, uh, to set up and do. Cool. Um, there was one about scheduling uh, SQL queries in Snowflake. So what I was demoing, that was all just in the UI in our worksheet. Uh, but most of our customers actually connect up to Snowflake either via our command line, SnowSQL, or whatever SQL editor they, they want. And so um, we don't have a built-in scheduler, so you can you can look to scheduling that as your own uh, in your own scheduler, or if you have an ETL tool, um, you can obviously utilize that too. Um, there was a related question around ETL in Snowflake. So we do not have an ETL tool, and so we our, our whole premise there is similar to the BI side of things. We will plug into whatever tool you have. Um, we have optimized connectors to specific ones, but we also have generic ODBC and JDBC drivers. Uh, okay. Well, I know there's a couple more coming in, but most of them we did answer, I think. Um, uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning, but we will send out a recording to everyone, I think within within 24 hours or so. Um, happy to share the slides too, so we'll, we'll look to maybe package those together. Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for joining. If you did have questions that we weren't able to get to, we're more than happy to um, follow up offline uh, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Connor. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Kelly.